The Indiana University Outdoor Center lies in a 2,500-acre tract of land, which is now known as Bradford Woods. It is named after the Bradford family that owned the property. Martha and Joseph Bradford and Marcia and Joseph Campbell journeyed from Chillicothe, Ohio to Morgan County. Marcia was Joseph Bradford's sister. The two couples settled in the area, the Campbells settling here at Bradford Woods and the Bradfords settling seven miles away in Green Township. After the Bradfords established a home, they had five children, Perry in 1859, Eliza in 1860, Alfred in 1863, John in 1864, and Clara in 1865. In the late 1870s, Martha moved the family back to Morgan County to her in-law's previous home, the Old House, after the death of her husband. At that time, the area was known as Campbell's Junction. A chance discovery by Perry in late 1887 or early 1888 changed the family's future. According to family legend, a fox that Perry was chasing escaped down a hole. As he tried to dig the animal out, he noticed the soil was unusual. He had some of the sandy soil sent to an Indianapolis company, the Malleable Casting Company. They reported that the sand was a very fine, high-grade molding or casting sand. This type of sand was used in the production of brass, iron, and steel as a mold casting material. Most importantly, the company was willing to pay the Bradfords for each wagon load of sand they could deliver. After only a few wagon loads of sand, the M.E. Bradford Sand Mining Company was incorporated. Because of the tremendous success of the sand, Perry bought land from the Indianapolis and Vincennes Railroad Company in 1894. He also bought a small train engine and installed a narrow gauge rail line. Tipple Trail is actually one of the tub trails used to haul the sand to Tipple Field. Tipple Field was the site of the railroad loading dock for the sand. A screening plant was also developed in this area. The plant made it possible to process the sand before it was shipped to the steel mills in Gary, Indiana. In 1909, the Bradfords constructed a carriage house near the home at the time, the Campbell House. It was used to house their new car, a white 1907 Buick, which was the first car in Morgan County. In 1910, the Bradfords decided to build a larger, more luxurious house overlooking old Highway 67 North. In 1912, Construction of Bradford Manor was complete. The manor was built as a showpiece for them to display their newfound wealth. Bradford Manor was and remains an intricate and vital part of the property. When the house was built in 1912, construction cost was $75,000. The reason for the building here was due to the fact that everyone who traveled along the highway could see it. The spring house was and is still positioned over a natural spring. Because the water comes from deep within the ground, it is usually very cool all year around. The current brick structure was built around 1900. The original wood structure was built in the mid-1850s. A long trough, which holds large volumes of water, was located in the back room. The trough was supplied with water from the natural spring and was used to hold the food that required refrigeration. Because none of the brothers married, there were no direct heirs to the Bradford estate. In 1937, Clara was killed in a car accident, leaving John the sole executor of the estate. The last thing John wanted was for the land to be divided up into little farms. He wanted to keep the estate intact. In 1938, John deeded his home and 900 acres of his wooded estate to Indiana University. The deed contained the stipulation that the property was to be used for the benefit of children and for charitable, educational, and recreational purposes. The foresight and generosity of Perry, John, and Albert Bradford made possible the development of this great recreational area and training ground dedicated to the children of Indiana.